Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning to all the students here, as well as all those who have joined online, as well as the e-learning students. Um, hope each of you all are doing well. Good. OK. All right. So uh, we're going to continue on with, with uh, the elements of a good marriage. And we, we looked at, uh, we, we started looking at one of them last week what did we what did we uh, focus on the last week yes communication yes we spoke about communication the last uh, uh, week and uh, this week we're going to be, so we're not going to be following the order of the book okay we may go a little bit here and there basically we're looking at what are the good aspects or good elements in a marriage? So we looked at communication. Today, we're going to be looking at conflict resolution. Now, how do we resolve conflicts, which is chapter 10 in your books? OK, I think the pages may be a little here and there. I've got an old edition of it. 105? 4. 104. OK, so it's 104 in your, uh, in your textbooks. Maybe the e-books, uh, I think, is a, is a little different. All right? OK, so we're going to be looking at resolving conflicts today or conflict resolution. OK, all right. So maybe the first question to ask you is, uh, is it OK for couples to have conflicts? Is it OK for couples to have conflicts? OK, Daniel says yes. What about my students here? It arises. OK, so whether you like it or not, there are conflicts going to happen. And so OK, Lucy says no. But it is true that conflicts will happen. Where there are two people, conflicts will happen in a marriage or in a workplace, in a classroom. You all have had conflicts with each other? You had, no? Yeah. So it is a normal thing to happen. Conflicts can happen. But what, does, what matters is how you deal with the resolve the conflicts. That's what really matters. OK? So conflicts are normal. And why, why do conflicts happen? What are your thoughts? Sorry? OK, because of the differences of opinions, then? Yes, somebody said something. Uh, Asapu? Koman? Different thoughts, yeah. We are all different, right? We, are, we come from different upbringing, different places, different experiences, different ideas, different opinions. So conflicts are inevitable. And it happens because we are different in, in, uh, in a lot of ways. OK? Now, conflicts, uh, how do you define a conflict? Conflict can be something very small. Like you have a small disagreement and they say, ah, it's okay, chal, let's forget it. Or it can be very, very big, right? So much so that you don't talk to somebody for years and years. So it can range from something that is very small to something that is quite uh, big, right? And uh, the important thing to understand is that in marriage, there will be conflicts, but it is a choice of how you deal with it and maintain peace. It's a choice, right? You can choose to stay in the conflict, stay in the disagreement, or you can choose to maintain the peace. And that's what we are going to be looking at. So one of the things that we looked at is conflicts happen because we are different. Okay, we're different. And um, uh, so again, let's look at some of the differences between uh, a man and a woman. OK. Can, can you all suggest some differences that's there between men and women? How are, they, how are men and women different? You don't have to be married to know this. No? If you've dealt with uh, people of the opposite uh, gender, you know that there is some difference. Yes, Diksha? Men don't like to do housework. <laughs> OK. <laughs> all right. How are they different? OK. All right. Yes, Koman. OK, women speak more and men speak less. OK, so remember, this is a general rule, OK? 
uh, it's not there may be exceptions to it you may have many people who don't fit exactly like women or men okay so men speak uh, speak less women speak more okay what are the other differences uh, online students you could also put up the way we think okay how kofi what is the difference in the way you all think They may, uh, there are certain things men may overlook. They will look at it, but will not take it serious. Will not think afar. But okay. those petty, petty things, the women will look at it and then think through, think through, and then look at it from okay. all different angles. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Nice. Okay. So he's saying that men, the way that you all think are different. Uh, women have the ability to look into very finer details, right? And uh, he said, think through, keep thinking about it. But men have a look at a more overall level and doesn't give too much of thought. I, I don't know, I know how many of you all agree to that, but uh, okay, that's that's Kofi's idea. Any any Anything else that you see different? Sorry, women, come again. Okay, that men should understand, is it? Okay, all right. Women are more sensitive. Okay, women, I think someone's written that. Lucy's written, women are sensitive to things we, de we deal with. They also multitask, that is, they can do many things at the same time whereas men i know there are many more boys and men here so let me ask them okay sometimes yes sometimes no that is one thing at a time is what is what the uh, idea is okay any other thoughts reasons uh how do you think they reason good point how do you think they reason Okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Right. So men are more, uh, as he said, task oriented, but women are more people oriented. Right. So women will think a lot more about the people also involved in the task, but men generally think about the task in itself. Right. So that's a that's a that's a big difference. Right? Is that, do you all think so? Ah, okay. Then, anything else? Women, <laughs> women like to debate. Men don't like to debate. Okay? All right? Okay. So there is, uh, there is this book, and you know, if ever you get a chance to read it, you must read it. It's by, it's by Christian authors. It's called Bill and Pam Farrell. And they talk about how women, uh, men are like waffles. You know what waffles are? Waffles are, um, you know, it's it's like a cake kind of a thing, but each it has small small boxes in it. Okay, so what the book is saying is that men think in compartments. I think about work, then I think about church, then I think about family, I think about uh, food, I think about exercise. So it's all very very different from one another. But women are like noodles. That one thing will touch the other, that will touch something else. So they're all very, very, everything is mixed. And one thing has an impact on the other. Nothing is isolated. Okay, but for men, the book says that men are more, they're able to isolate situations uh, apart. So whenever there is a problem at work, the problem is at work. It is not generally brought back home. But women aren't like that. Okay, this is again... Remember, it's a general rule. There can be exceptions to it. Okay, so don't go by words and say, okay, something is wrong with me. No, that may not be wrong with you. Even anatomically, structurally, uh, God has made the male male skull more thicker than the than the skull of the women. Okay, men have greater physical strength than that of women. Now, this doesn't, none of this shows 
like a superiority or an inferiority. We're just looking at the differences that are that that are there. Um, women have much more connections, brain connections than men do. Okay, and that's why and that's why you see some of these differences that are there. So even the way that we are structurally made is also different. Women have smaller brains than men, but their activities are much are are actually much more enhanced than men. Yes, Akil. Uh, they're more sharper. That, that's why I meant no. The brain, the neurons, the activity of the brain activity is much more for the women than in men, and that's why, yeah, and that's why the sharpness may be there. Okay. All right. So that's that's the anatomical one. How do women problem solve? Huh? Sorry? Yes. Women solve their problems by actually talking. Okay. So in future, when your wives come and talk to you, they're actually so trying to solve a problem in their head. Okay. And how do men solve problems? Sorry? See, Diksha? They want to be silent. Okay. So men generally solve problems when actually, if you've noticed, when you have uh, uh, maybe some kind of an issue you're dealing with, you probably want to go play a game. Now maybe it's a lot more on your mobile. But generally, men, or you may be watching like cricket or football or some game like that, because when something is happening there, when the conflict over there is being resolved, you know, you're actually also probably being charged. I don't know what works in the man's mind. I don't know. You should tell me. But it's true that a lot of times when men have conflicts, uh, a lot of them actually go into some kind of a problem, a different kind of a problem solving. Maybe it's a game of chess or, a, you know, going playing football or, you know, trying to sort out something in the house, you know, which has a problem. So, but whereas women, they like to talk, they like to discuss because through the discussion is how they get, uh, they, um, uh, they relate things. Okay. So we spoke about how do men think men are, uh, solve one problem at a time. Okay. One at a time, but women can do multiple things together and look at the impact a problem has for their work, their husbands, their children, their parents, all of that together is what that they keep in mind. So very complexly that they deal with the, with the situation. Okay. Memory. What about memory? <laughs> Women don't forget. Okay. So men do. Okay. And why is that? Is because women connect a lot of memories to emotional components. Right. And that's why, I mean, when you're married, you will know your wife will come and say, Do you remember that day when you were wearing red and I was wearing blue and we did this and that? And, you know, and the husband will have, I don't remember what you're saying, because it has a very emotional component for a for a woman. Again, none of this is bad or good or none of that. It's just the way that we are different. All right. Okay. Uh, sensitivity, how women are much more sensitive and they they do connect a lot with relationships and emotions. Okay. And that's, that's why the women do a lot more of shared things together than men do. Men can be a lot more isolated and on their own and uh, can reflect on things by themselves. Okay. So this is basically for us to understand that we are all different. There are many, many differences that are there and it's perfectly fine um, to be different. But when you're in a relationship, when you're in a marriage, it is to understand the differences that are there. Okay. And so that you can um, appreciate those differences and try and work out certain issues. All right. Uh, so let's take an example. Okay. Uh, there is there is some concern. Maybe the concern is about they want to buy a new appliance for the house, let's say a fridge or a TV. Okay. Uh, so the husband says, okay, we'll buy this one thing, let's say one, one certain TV. But the wife says, no, no, no. Uh, I have to figure out a few things. Where should I keep it? Right? How much of electricity will it cost? Will it keep all the food for the children for the week? Uh, will it, uh, you know, when my 
in-laws come, will it have an... You, you see the complexity of how the person thinks? And can this lead to a, con a conflict? It can, right? Yeah. So how do you understand it? <laughs> Go for shopping, then you... <laughs> okay. So... Sister, I think the woman is being reasonable. She's thinking uh, in uh, uh, form of future benefits, how you can invest the money and get um, the bet better deal. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it, it may be reasonable for women, but for men, it may be absolutely unreasonable saying that, okay, there are three fridge, you know, can't you just choose one? What is the big deal? Right. So how do we deal with that conflict is to really understand that we work differently and to be yeah, patient and enduring about how the other person may be. Okay, so that's the that's the idea over here. And in addition to that, you may have certain personal differences, right? The way that we we may have a certain personal way in which we deal with things. So that also sometimes can complicate the issue. All right. So what happens when there is a conflict? What do you do? What should you do? Okay, no, tell me what happens when there's a conflict? What is the first emotion that comes up? Okay, outburst or a reaction of what? What emotion? What emotion? Correct. And so what emotion comes up? Anger, right? Generally in conflicts, it is a lot of irritability and anger that can come up. What happens when we're angry? Okay, so what do we do when we're angry? Anger. Yes, Daniel, thank you. You hurt the other person. What, what, how do you hurt the other person? Come on, everybody think. By I saying think unwanted I'm... things. Yeah. Sorry? By saying unwanted things. Ah, correct. You say unwanted things. You probably call people names. Yes, no, not right, very bad. What? Come on, wake up. Okay, so you, you probably do say things that you don't mean, right? You may you may say words that you don't mean, labels that you that you don't mean, then what else happens? Very good. You may go back and say, you know, you're just like this. Always you say this. Last time, 10 times, for the last 10 years you've been like this, you continue to be like that. Excellent. What else? Ah, bring the family members into the picture. So there is there is a football team trying to figure out, uh, you know, where the ball should go, right? Ex excellent. What else? Okay, so blaming, right? You blame each other and say, I'm the only one who's doing something you're not doing. Right, excellent. Okay, so when there is anger, a lot of things go. Uh, yeah, Lucy said you shout at each other, label them, you bring about arguments. Okay, so when, when you become, when one gets angry, you're definitely not in a state of calmness, right? And that's when a lot of combat happens. So is anger... Being angry normal? Is being angry normal? Okay, Asapu says no. Asapu never got angry, Asapu. Sometimes, okay. So is, okay, Lucy says normal. Is it normal? Yes, sister, it is normal yes. in uh, uh, smaller ways. Okay, normal <laughs> in smaller ways. Okay, so anger, just like any other emotion, is God given. It's a normal emotion and it's a natural emotion. So feeling angry is something that uh, your body is telling you that something is wrong, right? So it's a normal emotion. What you do with the anger is what matters, okay? What does it say in the Bible, in Ephesians? In your anger, do not sin. Or be angry, but do not sin. That's what it says. So it's okay to be angry. But what you do with the anger is what matters. Okay? So, uh, we need to ensure that when we are angry, there needs to come a sense of self-control. 
right? And so if we want to have that self-control, what do we do? You press the pause button. What is pause button? Yeah, so you're saying, wait. Wait, don't react. Don't take this forward, just wait. You know how when you're going full speed on the uh, on the road, you see the stop, what do you do? You have to wait, you have to get the brake and stop. Even if you want to go, you can't, right? I mean, that's how you should, I don't know. In Indian roads, maybe that it isn't so. That's not a good principle. But we're supposed to stop, right? So it is to press the pause button and stop. And what do you do during the when you're pausing? Huh? Waiting for what? Waiting for grief. Okay, no. <laughs> okay, that's on the road. Now, when you're angry, you pause. What should you do? Keeping quiet for some time, sister. Keeping quiet for some time. Slow down. Okay. All right. Giving yourself time to come back and think. And so, once you pause, there are we're going to be looking at that in the next class, is the seven steps of how you deal with conflicts. Okay, So you're pausing so that you can get into the next, uh, you know, what should you do about resolving that conflict? And we will look at that seven steps. So it is important to pause. It, it's important to call that a stop. Okay, uh, So you come back to do those seven steps. Now, there are some, we will look at the seven steps a little later, but when we are angry, there are some things that we do, OK? Uh, and what are, what are some of the things that we should be careful of? What are some unhelpful responses towards conflict? What are we doing that is unhelpful? First one is we tend to be aggressive, right? So think of times when you all were teenagers. When you got angry, what did you do? Shout, scream, hit, punch, right? Destroy, correct? Huh? Go out of the house, yeah? Take something, break it, right? Aggression, right? Being aggressive. So aggressive could be either verbally or even your actions or even non-verbally. Any of that could be what you would do. Then another way is you bottle feelings. What does bottle feelings mean? is that you don't uh, express or, or let the other person know that you are a pressure cooker. What happens in a pressure cooker? Yeah, it is, it's building up. Slowly, slowly, it's building up, right? Or I don't know if you've seen a Coke bottle. You nicely shake it. It looks very still on the outside. You open it, what will happen? It is all going to blow up. So that's what happens when we, when unhelpful ways is when we are bottling feelings. You're very, very angry, but you're not saying anything. You're the silent killer. Right? You're waiting for a time to pounce back. Okay? So bottling feelings. Third is indirect approaches. Indirect approaches is, that you're feeling very upset and angry, but someone asks you, how are you? No, 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 everything is fine. And then you go to the side, you kick the dog, you jam the door, break the plates, right? So that is indirect. You cannot show your direct anger towards the person, so you are doing it indirectly, all right? Next is to seek external validation. When, you, when someone is not agreeing with you, especially when your spouse is not agreeing with you, who do you go to? Ah, parents. Say, he didn't, he's not listening, she's not listening. And so then there is a gang fight that is happening, right? You're, huh? Third, party. Third party, yeah. So there is World War happening. Uh, what is three? World War Three? Okay, World War Three is happening, all right? So this is when you seek external validation. Then comes unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is when you're not willing to forgive and you're holding on to that issue very, very strongly. Okay? And the third and the last one, which is the silent approach. Very, very dangerous, isn't it, Asapu? Huh? Yeah. 
it's a very dangerous thing just no one saying anything all quiet you don't know when it will erupt right and when it erupts it really erupts because i've seen couples who don't talk about their issue at all and finally when it erupts it is the ultimate it says this is it no no more reconciliation nothing this is over right so these are unhealthy ways to deal with a conflict okay and we are called to what is what is expected for us in a in a healthy good uh, believing marriage christian believing marriage is to engage in engage maturely to be able to work maturely how do you engage maturely how can you engage maturely okay you don't have to win the argument okay okay so one of the important things when you're um engaging in a mature way is to tap into the emotional side of you right often when we are trying to uh when we're having a conflict or a disagreement with someone it's actually not really about the specific issue it is about how your emotions are hurt isn't it right now think of the very simple example of the dosa you know the wife is making the dosa the husband says my mother's dosa is better what does abu ha huh? powerful mess dosa overcooked dosa you said okay okay so the issue is actually not about the dosa is it the issue is about the hurt behind that comment my mother's dosa is better or you know my my father does this better whatever so the issue is not actually about the dosa it's about the emotions that have been created the hurt and the pain and the anger or uh, betrayal that happens as a result of it right so when you engaging in a mature way you need to tap into that emotional side of things So in this dosa case, how is the best way for it to be resolved? Whoever prepares the dosa, holds yeah, in it. Yeah, go and eat. Uh, sister, you can go and eat in his mother's house. <laughs> Will that resolve a conflict? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, <laughs> what what is a what is a what is a way? Huh? Okay. One is don't compare, right? Okay. Now suppose it happened. What will you do? How will you get out of it? Both ways. Like like a wife would say, the husband would say. I mean, sorry, the wife would say something like, uh, "You can't do this for me. I'll go ask my father." Right? I think why, women do that. Uh, so husband, uh, wife will go and say, "Come, let's." Um, you know i want to buy this and you'll say ah okay later and so he, she'll say okay you don't come i'll go ask my brother or i'll go ask my father right and that gets husband very irritated so the same thing some way or the other okay so how would you deal with that <laughs> okay <laughs> okay compensation okay so when we say you know to embrace the emotional side is to actually move away like i said from this from the dosa and go and say you know i'm so sorry that i hurt you i said something that really upset you i shouldn't have said that right uh, maybe one way is to say would you forgive me right and i'll be very careful about what i say or i'll say i know by what i said this hurt you really badly it made you feel compared right do you think it will dissolve it it will no rather than saying no 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 my mother dosa was nice and round yours is a little like africa that's why you know when when you're making those excuses it gets actually much worse isn't it so engaging in a mature way is to really look at the emotional side of it and say you know i'm sorry that you got hurt i'm i um, you know i i i made an insensitive comment 
right? I shouldn't have done that. So when you're actually getting to the emotional side of you, there's a lot more of understanding that happens, okay? So tapping into that emotional side. Also, also mentioning how you feel. So let's say the lady says, you know, I really, maybe she doesn't say anything. Okay, you the husband has said, okay, this dosa is my mother's dosa is much better. She doesn't say anything, but she's it is there, right? It's there underlying everything that she does. Okay, next morning, again the dosa comes, again the comment comes, nothing is saying. So it's what is it? It's being built up. One after the other, it's being built up. Is that good? No. So maybe she can say, you know, I just want to share this with you that what you say hurts me. It may be true that your mother's dosa is better than mine, but what you say hurts me. It makes me feel you don't appreciate me, or you don't love me, or you don't care for me. So when you're saying that, the husband say, "Are you? You? No, 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 none of that. I was just telling you about about this. I'm sorry if you got hurt, right? So the way that we communicate and engage with that is what really matters. So to describe what you feel, right, is also important in uh, dealing with a conflict. So you, for example, sometimes maybe the husband doesn't even know what he's saying is causing hurt, right? And that's why not bottling up the feelings is very important to be able to share and uh, uh, discuss that. So don't attempt to, what do you say, push things under the carpet, resolve it then and there. And it's a good practice to do it before marriage. So if you have conflicts between people here, resolve it. Those are difficult conversations. Those are hard conversations. But resolve it and say, Asapu, you hurt me that day, right? Or you know, you 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 share whatever is going on and discuss it so that you come back to a normal place. Okay. Second is how do you engage in a mature way? No name calling. No putting down. No saying. No insults. Okay, we have a, we probably have it maybe as part of our culture. We've heard people call us names, no? Isn't it? I don't know. I, I've heard a lot of names, isn't it? So we think it's a very, very normal thing to call somebody names. You're a lazy fool, right? Or, uh, you know, if you eat a lot, you're a bakasura. Isn't it? You, you say these things without really understanding, but being careful not to put any names or any labels that put down or can criticize the person or the character of the person, right? Next is no blaming. I did this because you did that. Like for the dosa incident, I'm sorry, I'm stuck on the dosa. You know, when, when you're saying something about the dosa, the next day you're doing uh, maybe in the, in the tea, you put extra sugar or you put salt instead. Okay, I put this because you said that. I wanted you to know how this feels. Right? So what is that? That is tit for tat, butter for fat. You kill my cat, I kill your rat. No? So it's that it doesn't show maturity. Right? So, so being uh, not blaming and accepting your responsibility. Yes, I said something that hurt you. Sometimes it's a very hard thing to accept your responsibility. No? No, Vimal? Is it a hard thing? Yeah, we we have something that we want to protect ourselves. How can I tell Diksha that I'm wrong, right? But it's that it's the it's that the self that comes out that sometimes makes us want to blame somebody else and not take the responsibility. So it's important to take that responsibility. And how do you engage in mature conversations in a conflict? Stay in the present moment. Okay, when you're having a conflict, don't talk about the problems you had at your wedding day. I know of couples, even after 25, 30 years of marriage, they're still going on to say how badly they were treated during the wedding day. They are absolutely unnecessary. So stay in the current problem. If you're talking about the problem today, stick to that problem and not gather dust from all that's there of years behind. OK? Yes, ma'am. You have a question. Ma'am, if someone intentionally is making you angry again and again, 
so how we can deal give me an example vima like someone is uh, uh, someone someone is doing like uh, to uh, get you angry give me an example how does someone intentionally make you angry actually it happens with me ma'am ah tell me ah. so someone is like uh, uh, like when we are uh, serving food so and uh, uh, he knows what he is doing and uh, and uh, i don't know how okay so i think what you're saying is i'll give uh, maybe i'll give you an example it may not be like your example someone is calling you a name and you've told them you don't like it and they keep calling you that name intentionally because they know you don't like it is that right is that one something like that yeah or they do something or they say something to you when you've actually told them you don't like it they keep irritating you doing that right okay now so let's look at this one thing when we get angry when i am getting angry whose responsibility is it whose responsibility is it huh it's mine right no matter how many times you do something it is still my choice whether i get angry or not is that right yeah oh okay it's it's hurting you it's upsetting you okay so the the important things is yes telling them that this hurts me this is upsetting me uh you know and you're telling them what you need so please don't do that again right they continue doing that then i think it's important to maybe bring it up once again have a conversation said you know i've told you that this is something that hurts me i want to know why you're continuing like that again right and it still continues if you do understand that they're doing it so intentionally to irritate you then it's important to place certain boundaries right And, and say that you know, if if this kind of respect, because you need to be, you're being respectful and you're asking for respect, right? You, uh, tell them that you know I'm going to place this boundary again, but you need to be careful that you're not harboring any kind of irritation, hurt, anger towards them, and and that's what the seven steps will help you with, right? So it's good to tell them, it's good to bring it up, but to sometimes you may need to build a boundary. build a certain you know fence around that okay yes can you take the mic oh uh, ma'am in the first thing that we uh, were discussing like the not so good ways to approach how to resolve a conflict of being silent for a long time and trying to build up or cook up the emotions sometimes when somebody really is not understanding you and thing so is it a wise approach rather than explaining you've explained it once you've explained it twice and still they continue to behave in the same manner then it is it better to refrain and just be silent and not try to you know uh, uh, gain anything out of it correct so uh, it but in maybe in a marriage issue that may not be very helpful right so and that's why if you feel that you're not able to manage a conflict on your own you get the help of somebody else who can actually be like a support or a facilitator between the two of you to discuss that so that some understanding can come about preferably somebody neutral neutral yes neutral. someone neutral right so getting the help of an intermediary or a counselor or a uh, you know a pastor or maybe not a family member family members are generally not very helpful because they'll be biased you know someone who is a third party who doesn't have any specific interest towards uh, either of you okay and uh, so you can take that support for things like that okay all right any questions anybody has any questions yes absolutely especially when you all are angry it's always so you should remember that when people are ang angry we are like being intoxicated right what happens when we are intoxicated intoxicated is you nasha yeah when you either drank too much or you know what happens you don't have good judgment you don't have good wisdom you don't have discernment and that's what happens in anger so many of your emotions are running up 
that you 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 find yourself uncontrollable you're not in control of what you do have you all experienced that when you all are very angry you'll have done something that you look back and say i i wish i hadn't done that or you, know, you must have said something you must have done something you must have broken something and then decided uh, and just figured out that that wasn't a right thing to do right okay yes uh, gertrude sister i have a question like uh, some people they keep uh, building up what happened in the past like gathering dust mm. and it becomes uh, so intense at the time like you know they are not able to forgive and uh, move on so mm. how do you deal with uh, this kind of person mm. so th that's when it's important probably to get uh, uh, to get the help of a third person a third party right to to um, to help the people within the conflict to understand that we will deal with one thing at a time one conflict at a time so we will look at the current conflict although it may have um what do you say uh, uh, connections to the past what you're doing is to build uh, uh, to to discuss one thing at a time and that may sometimes not happen when there are two people in that conflict but that's why when you get a mediator who can circle it down on the present and resist the urge to take up issues of the past so you may need to get support and help for that if there is some person who doesn't understand how the need uh, to I mean uh, counseling right yes okay. yes Okay. Okay. Thank you, sister. All right. Yeah. Any other questions? I just want to ask, like, if someone has done something, like, it hurts really, and we are we don't want to hold back. We are just forgiving. Then the other person will say, "Okay, you didn't get really hurt. That's why you left." So, what to say? Like, how to handle that situation? They will say you didn't really get hurt, so they continue doing the same thing. Huh? No, not continue. So, like someone has done something, and if we really get hurt, but like after later some time, we don't want to hold back. We are you forgiving. Forgive? Okay. But the other person will say you left so easily, like you didn't really get hurt. So, how to handle like this? Okay. So, I think it's important for you to understand that your emotions are valid. Right, what you have felt, hurt, pain is valid, and the way that you let go of it is something that you know you, with the help of God, you've struggled to do, and you you've actually worked through that. If someone tells you you didn't get hurt enough, that I think is a uh, you know you take it with a pinch of salt because they don't understand what you're feeling, right? Yeah, they've they've not understood it properly. Right, so there is no point explaining to them and saying, "No, no, I was actually hurt." I mean, if that's the way that you see it, that's the way that you see it. Do you really want to spend time to help them understand how hurt you are? It may not be necessary. It may may be a waste of time. Uh, when people used to tell, like, uh, if you don't show your anger to anyone, so they will do same things again and again with you. They will you. take advantage of you. They will take advantage, and. Uh, no will no no one will have value of you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what about that? Okay. So like I said, it is how you deal with the anger that matters. I mean, how you deal with the situation that matters. You are angry about something. Is it only anger that that can work, or can some other way work? I don't have to get angry, but I can tell you, Vimal. I'll say, Vimal, what you did really upset me. Okay, and this was not the right thing to do because ABCD, I got affected with this, I got affected with this. And I'm telling you that it hurt me, but I'm willing to you know, move past it, willing to forgive. I'm looking at you for not repeating this again. I can do that, right? So I don't have to only be angry. I can do it in a very calm way, but in a very, very firm, mature way also. Mm. Mm. 
so you can be an example of how you will engage with them rather than replying in anger say i see that this is getting to be a heated discussion you're getting upset and angry i will break for for now or you know i'm not going to continue this discussion when you're calmer i will come back and talk about it so you are being an example of how to deal with the situation when you're actually reflecting how to respond okay all right okay any other ex any other questions okay so we we will look at remember we said if if there is anger coming up we should pause and we should uh, look at these seven steps of resolving conflicts okay but that's what we're going to look at if you look at that there's a little chart there that talks about those seven steps the first three steps is something that you do individually you and god alone and the next uh, four steps is something that you will do as a couple now these are principles you can use with anybody it's just not with a couple but with anyone so the first three steps is you're going to god and you are dealing with your personal emotions that's come as a result of the pain or the anger or all of that that's come and the next four are that once you've done that you come back and you work with these issues with your partner or with your with your spouse okay all right um you know I, i don't want to break the flow so shall we break right now and come back after a break to continue okay we will come back by 11 o'clock <clears throat>